Welcome to The Metabolic Link, a medical and science-focused podcast that explores the common thread of metabolism in health and disease. This is where science meets society. Hi, welcome back to another episode of The Metabolic Link. I'm your host, Victoria Field, and today I have the incredible honor of interviewing a guest who also happens to be a speaker at Metabolic Health Summit 2024 that's coming up January 25th through the 28th in Clearwater Beach, Florida. It's going to be an incredible conference. It's a scientific and medical conference. If you've never been before, we cover all things metabolic health and metabolic-based therapy from in the trenches in the lab to implementation. And today I'm speaking with somebody who has a wealth of knowledge when it comes to implementation. Her name is Kelly Faltersack, and she is a registered dietitian at UW Health in Madison, Wisconsin. She's got over 10 years of experience as a registered dietitian nutritionist, five of those years spent in the neurointensive care unit, and then six of those years uh, really in managing ketogenic metabolic therapy for adults with epilepsy and a wide variety of other neurological conditions from Parkinson's disease to uh, migraines, uh, even mental health uh, conditions. So I'm really thrilled to be introducing you to her today. Uh, She's going to be bringing such an incredible perspective to our conference that you won't want to miss it. You can find more information about it at metabolichealthsummit.com, but I hope you enjoy this interview as much as I did. And uh, please welcome Kelly Faltersack. Kelly, thank you so much for joining me today on the Metabolic Link. It's such uh, an honor to have you here chatting with me, but also as a speaker of Metabolic Health Summit 2024. Thank you. It's an honor to be here and just an honor to be invited to speak. Yeah, no, you've got a wealth of experience um, when it comes to assisting people with ketogenic metabolic therapy um, from, you know, the neurointensive care all the way to now you've kind of branched into a variety of other neurological conditions. So for those who are listening, I want to give people a a bit of a history of how how this all started. Maybe take us back to the beginning for you um, as a dietitian, like what uh, inspired you to take this path that you're on? And what has it been like to kind of progress through the different areas that you've been working on? Yeah, so I actually became a dietitian because um, in my early teen years, I struggled with health issues. I had some severe GI issues that caused very debilitating daily pain. Um, And I grew up eating a lot of processed food, a lot of sugar. My diet was terrible. Um, When I struggled with my GI issues, doctors had prescribed me a variety of medications. I think I was taking 16 pills a day at one point and nothing helped and I was still in constant pain. So I ended up reading about nutrition because I was desperate to feel better and I completely changed my diet. I focused more on whole foods and cut out the sugar and all of my GI issues went away. And it was just extremely powerful to see that like using food instead of a bunch of medication had such a huge impact on my own quality of life and my own well-being. So I knew from like age 14, I was like, I need to study nutrition because if it's this powerful for me, I want to help other people. So I (laughs) was very interested in learning more and expanding my knowledge in nutrition. Um, I got my bachelor's degree from the University of Wisconsin Stout, and then I went on to complete a dietetic internship and then my master's degree in nutrition at um, Mount Mary University in Milwaukee. And then I worked a variety of jobs. I actually had some time in skilled nursing facilities supporting memory care patients. Um, And then I ended up at UW Health and um, I kind of fell into ketogenic therapy, honestly. Um, There were multiple open positions when I was interviewing and they, you know, the hiring manager gave me the option of, well, we have a general medical position open. So you have to know a little bit about a lot of things, or we have this neurology position open supporting the neuro ICU and um, the adult adult ketogenic therapy clinic. And I was like, well, I don't really know anything about this keto thing. The only knowledge I had from my entire education as a dietitian was like a 20 minute video in my undergrad where they had a kid um, drinking heavy cream and eating butter. And I remember thinking that's so gross. I want nothing to do with with that therapy. Um, So that's how it was presented to me in my undergraduate. And I was like, but like, I'm open to learning. I, I feel like I would rather 
know everything there is to possibly know about one area and really specialize than be a jack of all trades and know a little bit about a lot of things. So I kind of chose chose to specialize and um, I was very fortunate that we had a really great pediatric dietitian that specialized in keto and she trained me and then I attended some conferences to expand my knowledge and you know being a dietitian that didn't know anything about keto I felt very uncomfortable at first you know it's the opposite of everything that you learn in school like telling people to eat a high fat diet was very scary to me at first mm -hmm. um, and in order to feel comfortable recommending that and supporting patients I just dove into the literature. So I read like every published article I could get my hands on dating back to like the 1920s when the ketogenic um, diet was first established um, and just dove into the literature. And I listened to every, you know, audiobook and every podcast interviewing researchers that I could get my hands on in order to just really expand my knowledge and feel comfortable with this area. Um, so, and I also really appreciate that the keto dietitian community is just so amazing and so supportive and everyone is so willing to share their knowledge and help, you know, support and mentor each other. So it's just a really amazing community to be a part of as you're kind of learning, learning the ways. Yeah. And there's so, so much to learn, of course, you know, when I first kind of got started in this whole world, was like seven years ago, seven, eight years ago. And it was the, it was like unmarked territory. Right. So I can only imagine as a dietitian also helping patients and trying to navigate, you know, the appropriate protocol, but also going against what we've been traditionally taught in many ways that it's a difficult path to follow, but oh my gosh, so rewarding. Uh, and, and like you said, there's such a great community of dietitians, a small community. That's why we're so honored to have you because as a speaker, because um, we really need to continue to spread the knowledge. I think there's been a lot of work that's been done, of course, you know, the Charlie Foundation and variety of dietitians teaching others, but um, there's still many epileptic patients, as you know, um, or folks with neurological conditions that might be able to benefit, but aren't even aware of what is available to them. Um, so that's an incredible story, by the way, starting out <laughs> when you were 14. And I'm so curious, what, what did your physician at the time you know, when you literally are healing yourself through food, how, how did that process go where you really found the answer, you know, through what was in your kitchen? <laughs> well, they asked what I was doing and they told me, whatever you're doing, just keep doing it. And I was able to come off of all medication and I, I haven't had any GI issues since. So I've been completely symptom free for the rest of my, the rest of my life. So it's, it yeah. is that incredible. And, you know, that's, you know, not everyone has to be on a ketogenic diet, but it just speaks to how powerful food as medicine can be and just cleaning up your, your diet and the way that you eat. hundred um, percent. It's, it's just as powerful as well, medications out there, which is why it's so important to work with somebody such as yourself in the process. You've worked with a wide variety of patients um, though. I'd love to talk a little bit more about that. I mean, you've been in, you know, in the trenches in the intensive care unit, the neurointensive care unit, all the way to, you know, working with adults to now expanding that uh, your area of expertise into a variety of other neurological conditions. Would you kind of explain what that process has kind of been like, um, you know, throughout your professional career? It's just been so diverse within this very special specialty sort of field. It's been so diverse in who, who you've worked with, which really goes to show how powerful of a tool this really can be. Yes. Yeah, so when I started out um, at UW Health, I primarily worked inpatient. So I worked in the neurointensive care unit and the neurogeneral care unit. Um, and then like half day a week, I would do outpatient ketogenic therapy in, in our outpatient clinic. And um, I ended up working in the neuro ICU for about five years. And over that period of time, my outpatient clinic continued to grow um, and more and more patients needed support. And the more patients I worked with, the more passionate I became about ketogenic therapy because it's just such an amazing and powerful tool. And it's, it's a really amazing type of medical nutrition therapy because patients get results pretty quickly and you can see the huge impact in their quality of life, their seizure reduction. Um, in Wisconsin, you can't drive if you've had a seizure in the last three months. So mm -hmm to have people who have never in their adult 
life had a driver's license suddenly be able to get a driver's license and have a car like that is huge in terms of your quality of life it impacts you know where you live where you work what type of job you're able to accept you don't have to rely on public transportation or a ride from a family member or friend like it impacts so many different areas of your your quality of life and that was just so rewarding that I was excited to do more of that. So I eventually made the transition um, to fully outpatient because our clinic grew so much. So much. Um, we primarily, when I first started, we only saw patients with epilepsy, but with all of the expanding research being published and interest in different neurological areas, we would randomly get requests from different neurologists or primary care providers saying, hey, I have this patient that is trying a ketogenic diet on their own and they really need support. Would you please see them? So at first we would take these requests on a case by case basis and consider like, okay, they don't, they don't have seizures. Like, are we okay with seeing them? And, you know, we, we almost always said yes, because we, it's really, important to have medical supervision when you're doing ketogenic therapy. We have a really good understanding of like how different medications might play with ketogenic therapy, what labs to watch, how to prevent side effects, how to make it effective and therapeutic. Um, I don't think it's something to dabble in without knowledge. Uh, so that medical supervision is a really important component. Um, so you know, as we started getting more experience with other neurological conditions and seeing a lot of success, we expanded. So we still primarily see patients with epilepsy. We also expanded into supporting patients with migraines or headaches because it's very effective for that. Um, we also see patients with brain tumors. Um, we have some patients with autism. Um, I've worked with patients with Alzheimer's disease. So we we see a wide variety of neurological conditions. And I'm also really excited about the interest in metabolic psychiatry because a lot of our patients with epilepsy and other conditions, you know, anxiety, depression are, are huge issues. Um, and a lot of them report improvement in mood when they're on a ketogenic diet. So that's really exciting that that research is being expanded. Oh yeah, no, it's, it's, Incredibly exciting, uh, especially within the mental health realm, but all of these neurological conditions and, and being there on the front lines working with, you know, you started within epilepsy, but it's expanded to everything from migraines to, like, well, you're seeing a, a side benefit of mental health improvements, right? To all <laughs> Alzheimer's. Um, what has that been like for you as a dietitian? There's very few, you know, nutrition interventions like the ketogenic diet um, that, really create such a ma massive shift in the brain or have the potential to create such a massive shift in the brain. What has that been like for you to see this across such a wide variety of neurological conditions like you have? It's really exciting. <laughs> I, I can't imagine doing any more fulfilling work than this. Like it's you know, in other areas of nutrition, you, you know, maybe you provide heart healthy education and then you never see the person again. So you don't know the impact of what you're doing. You know, it could take decades to see, you know, did that person end up having a good heart healthy life or not? And that's, for me, I think that's really tough because in ketogenic metabolic therapy, you can see the results and the impact within like three months or even sooner. So like, it's exciting to see a direct impact of someone changing their nutrition on all aspects of life and just huge improvement of quality of life. I've had patients who are on disability that are able to go back to work. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of epilepsy, you know, if people have improved seizures, that's obviously a wonderful thing. Um, but patients also report like a lot of improvement in the severity of their seizures. So even if they have the same total number of seizures, they, instead of having like a large grand mal seizure, they may just have a small staring episode. So that's a huge difference in the seizure severity that I don't think that the research is adequately capturing right now, like what's published, you know, because in research you're tallying like, oh, they had one seizure, but there's a very big difference in the type of seizure. Um, or our patients will report that their seizures may be shorter, which is not captured in the research. Um, or that they recover faster. So instead of taking two hours or the rest of the day to recover after seizure, they bounce right back or they might recover in 10 or 15 minutes or 30 minutes, which is a huge deal for people. Yeah, absolutely. No, I think, I think you've, you 
made a good point there about how we need to further explore some of the just shifts within sort of seizure severity for those with epilepsy, you know, going from a grand mal to just like something like a focal seizure from time to time, you know, that's a huge difference, <laughs> a massive difference. And in terms of recovery, and I mean, there's no comparison there. So um, just in that in and of itself. And um, for those who are listening, you know, we have a lot of folks who maybe understand a ketogenic diet, but maybe some people who are very new to this or somebody who's listening, who is suffering from epilepsy currently. And that's like, what is this therapy we're talking about here? It's very different. There are so many different, I think one of the possible issues, and we'll get into kind of some of the obstacles you've seen as a dietitian, but one of the issues is sort of, um, there are so many different types of a ketogenic diet. <laughs> and in some cases for some neurological conditions, there aren't quite standards just yet. However, with epilepsy, there is kind of a, an approach you take essentially, um, especially when it, you, it comes to children versus, you know, a child who's been on it for maybe quite some time that maybe wants to transition to a modified cat because there's so many ways to go about it. So I'd love to hear a little bit more about sort of the building blocks of what this looks like for epilepsy and your approach to it, you know, what you've learned, because I'm sure over the years, you've kind of taken what you've learned and developed it into something that is your own. Yeah, that's an excellent question. So let me just kind of take a step back and just give an overview, you know, for listeners of what the ketogenic diet is. So on a standard American diet, which is high in carbohydrates, your body is always using carbohydrates for energy. Your body takes those carbohydrates and converts those to glucose, and that is the body's energy source. Um, on a ketogenic diet, which is a low carb, moderate protein, high fat medical nutrition therapy, um, the body is forced to start using fat for energy because your carbohydrate intake is so low. When the body is using fat for energy, your liver can take that fat and convert it into ketones. And ketones are a wonderful fuel source for the brain. So um, being in that state of nutritional ketosis is thought to act similar to like an anti-seizure medication. So we want people to be in in ketosis consistently. We don't want people going in and out of ketosis. That's why like, I hate the word diet. It implies that you should feel deprived or restricted or that it's something you can start and stop or cheat on. Um, that is not ever how I want people to feel. There is a low carb way to do just about everything. It's just about changing the ingredients that you're cooking with. Like we can make a low carb pizza, it just has different ingredients. Um, so I, I, I don't like the word diet. Um, I like to use the term medical nutrition therapy because that is what we practice as dietitians. And, you know, in this, in this world, we often call it ketogenic therapy or ketogenic metabolic therapy because our whole goal is to alter the body's metabolism and force the body to use ketones for energy. So that's just kind of a brief overview of that's great. That's the great. ketogenic diet. <laughs> um, so my approach, um, I would say for the majority of patients that I see in our adult neurology ketogenic diet therapy clinic, we tend to use the modified Atkins diet, um, which was um, created by Johns Hopkins University. Um, it's typically 20 grams of net carbohydrates per day. And the way that we count net carbohydrates is we take total carbohydrates and we subtract the fiber. Um, so once people limit to about 20 grams of net carbs per day, they have a moderate amount of protein and eat a lot of fat. I try to be, you know, flexible and understand that not everyone eats the same thing every single day. Um, so I try to build in some flexibility. I know a lot of people really enjoy using apps to track their intake and people tend to get hung up on macros. And I, I think it's important to have a little bit of grace and flexibility and not feel like, oh, I have to eat exactly what this app tells me every single day. So I think that helps with compliance and, you know, sustainability in the long term so that people can stick with this because this is a lifestyle change. This is a medical nutrition therapy. It's not just some, some diet to try for a short time. And I think that having support and medical supervision from a team that knows what they're doing is super important. I have had patients come to me thinking that they are doing keto, um, you know, right. that they read about on the internet. And there's a very big difference between like internet keto and like therapeutic ketosis for neurological conditions. People that are like oh. eating keto recipes that they found on the internet, but they're going in and out of ketosis, like they might see some benefit. But if you work with a team that can help you fine tune and optimize, 
you get more result if you um, do it in a way that's therapeutic. And, it, you know, you might get some benefit from doing something that you learned online, but there's a very big difference in the way that we implement it. And there's also some interesting tools that I like to keep in my pe back pocket. One of my favorite things to do is, um, you know, add MCT oil. So MCT stands for medium chain triglyceride. And the way that I like to think of MCT oil is quick energy. So as soon as you consume MCT oil, it's immediately absorbed through the portal vein so that your liver can quickly convert it into ketones. So it can actually boost your ketone levels. And then there's some really interesting research in animal models that C10 MCT oil can actually have an anticonvulsant effect in animal studies. So there may be potentially an anti-seizure benefit of that as well. So it's really exciting, um, you know, if people don't get enough result on um, like the modified Atkins diet alone, that later on in their therapy, after we have fi fine-tuned the diet, you know, I would always start there with fine-tuning and making sure that they're doing everything correctly. Then I love to add MCT oil to get them even more benefit. Um, and that's often really helpful for a lot of people. And as a bonus, and maybe a, a caution, um, MCT oil can have a, a bit of a laxative effect. Constipation is one of the most um, common side effects of ketogenic therapy. So it's kind of dual purpose that if someone is struggling with constipation and needs to boost their ketone levels, it's awesome that they can just use MCT oil instead of having to take a stool softener or laxative or, you know, make other interventions to treat constipation. Yeah, that'll balance you out real quick. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. Um, <laughs> well, that's that's a great tool in the toolbox. I'd love to hear about maybe some other tools, uh, you know, and if you guys often use, I know you just mentioned you, you test blood ketones from time to time, um, or maybe even blood glucose, like how often are you using tools like that to help people stay motivated? Um, it sounds like MCTs are a powerful tool, especially I'm sure with like somebody who's suffering from cognitive decline or, you know, makes it really challenging to follow a diet. So I'd love to hear about a few other tools and tricks that you have up your sleeve to keep patients motivated. Cause I think one of the biggest things that you hear is just, Oh, so hard. It's such a difficult diet to stick with. And, um, I think there can be if there's a shift in mindset and sort of focusing on maybe some of the positive things and ways that patients can kind of get in, empowered and excited about it. Um, I'm sure you have plenty of those kinds of tools up your sleeve and helping people stick with it. Yeah. What's funny is that when I first started and I didn't know anything about the ketogenic therapy, I joined a whole bunch of online communities and kind of just observed what the most common issues people had and the most common side effects and struggles. And I just was like, okay, here are all the things that people are struggling with because if you only see patients every so often, you might not know what they're going through on a day-to-day -day basis. Mm -hmm. So I have continuously adapted and enhanced my educational materials to proactively like provide handouts and support um, for the things that people often struggle with. Like if someone struggles with eating out or social situations or has to travel a lot for work or things like that, like I have a handout for just about everything. <laughs> um, or if there's one patient that really struggled, like when I have downtime, I make like just a huge handout for that one patient and then save it for later. And like the odds are it's going to happen to somebody else again as well. So every time somebody has a struggle, I pretty much turn it into a handout. So I have a never ending um, list of tools at my disposal to support patients. Um, one of the other things that that we ended up doing is um, we give all of our new patients a, we call it a keto starter kit to help them be successful. Um, we were very fortunate to be able to secure grant funding to provide that for free to all of our patients because mm -hmm. it can be difficult. It's a huge undertaking to completely change everything about the way that you eat. So we felt really passionate about making sure that we could provide resources to help people be successful. And um, the things that we include in our keto starter kit, we actually start patients on urine ketone testing. Um, certainly blood ketone testing is the, the gold standard, but I don't want to have people invest in a blood ketone meter if they decide that it's not for them and they're not going to stick with it. So that's something that we kind of offer for people once they decide, yes, this is for me, I'm going to continue. Um, but we start people off on urine ketone testing, and that is something that we offer for free in our starter kit. Um, we actually give them the book 
um, from the team at Johns Hopkins. I might have it around here. Oh, awesome. um, it's I like the, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the book about, it's like the modified Atkins diet and ketogenic therapies that, that Johns Hopkins wrote. So we actually include that in our starter kit. We have a folder with all of the educational materials and handouts that I have developed, and I go through that with patients during a one-on-one -on -one nutrition education session. And then, you know, towards the back, it has all of the additional things like, you're not there yet, but these are things you might struggle with eventually, and it's nice that you just have it here to refer to when you need it. Mm -hmm. um, so I have all kinds of resources in there. Um, I actually developed a keto cookbook, not like one that people can buy on the internet, but like recipes that I have developed. Um, before the pandemic, we offered free quarterly cooking classes for all of our patients in our learning kitchen. So I've taught so many cooking classes that I developed um, lots of lots of recipes and we kind of just compiled them all into one place into a little cookbook for our patients and I have meal planning and meal preparation tips um, lists of snack ideas um, lists of high carb foods that people might be missing and how to swap it for a low carb alternative so I, I have tons and tons of resources to help people like actually change the food that that they eat um what else is in there? Oh, silicone molds for fat bombs. That's another oh, tool that a lot of people like. Wow, you guys are creative. I love it. That's awesome. Yes. Oh, so that's... we send send all those great tools to people. That's amazing. So any patient you work with, uh, you're they're getting this incredible kit to kind of jump start and make it fun too. I think you know in the process and really, um, you know, education is empowerment, right? So giving them the the book to kind of read and understand. And be a part of their treatment plan, right? I think that's like a huge piece um, to the quality of life place. You know, a lot of these folks are coming from maybe medication after medication after medication, maybe like yourself in many ways, but obviously not for a neurological condition. But it can feel, I, I'm, I'm, I would assume, just great to be a part of it in such a powerful way and, and have an impact that's can be just as powerful as drugs in many ways, if not more for some folks. So that's really great that you guys are, have so many cool resources. I've also seen some of your cooking videos for a for public <laughs> spin. Cooking videos online do exist with Kelly. So um, we'll be sure to link some of those um, in the uh, show notes here because those are so you know, powerful for people to be able to participate. I mean, I think I, I saw something on cornbread and all kinds of like holiday stuff. So you really can, it's so such a diverse, it can be such a diverse diet and you can really make something, um, you know, anything you're craving, you can make a low carb version out of it. Um, so you're, you're, you know, a dietitian who's really showing people the possibilities with this. It's not your drinking heavy cream with a side of butter, <laughs> right? It's, it can be fun. And you you can be a part of it and get creative and all the things, um, which is really amazing. I want to talk a little bit about that. You know, of course, the research is continuing to explode in this area of neurological health um, as a whole, you know, with epilepsy, traumatic brain injury, all the way to Alzheimer's, you name it, and metabolic psychiatry now, of course. Um, this is such an exciting area uh, within the field um, as a whole. And, you know, being the metabolic link, we, we love talking about sort of the, the common thread of metabolism that's tying all of these things together. There's a lot to learn around mechanisms at play here for sure. Um, but what do we know so far? You know, we have an idea around how ketosis might influence neurotransmitters or, you know, just ketones in and of themselves being neuroprotective. Do you want to speak to some of the potential mechanisms at play for epilepsy? And you kind of briefly touched on how, you know, many people who are suffering from these conditions are also having, you know, issues with uh, mood disorders and a variety of other things. So I'd love to hear a little bit more from your perspective around what might be at play, um, allowing for you as a dietitian to have such a powerful effect amongst a wide variety of conditions. Yeah, I think if we knew exactly how the ketogenic diet worked, like the exact mechanism to target, it would right. be a pill and the, yes. and that person's going to just make a lot of money. Very, very um, true. <laughs> but I mean, in reality, I think that it's multiple mechanisms. It impacts so many different things in the brain. Um, my favorite resource, there's a really awesome paper by Dr. Young Rowe 
that mm -hmm. has like this huge table of all the proposed mechanisms of how the ketogenic diet might be helpful for um, seizures. So I would highly recommend anyone interested in reading about the mechanisms, check out that paper. Um, but I think it's most likely a synergistic effect of all those things and potentially also like the gut microbiome. Um, you know, there's a lot of interest in researching that area. So I, I think it's yet to be fully understood, but being in that state of nutritional ketosis is, you know, seems to be what is helpful for seizures and other neurological conditions. No, absolutely. I, it's really exciting, especially you touched on gut microbiome. We had a, a speaker last year out of UCLA. They're doing some really great work um, when it comes to the gut microbiome and, and the influence of the gut microbiome on the ability for ketosis or the ketogenic diet to actually have an anti-seizure effect. Um, there's so much to learn, but it's so exciting that, you know, there's dietitians like you who are doing such good work. And I, I can only imagine how busy you are though, with this massive expansion of, of your, you know, practice, essentially I, what, what's next for you? Like, what are your goals within this field? Um, you've obviously, you, you're working with a wide variety of patients. Now you're doing such great educational work, um, especially with your direct patients, but what's, what's next for you? Like, what is your vision for the future within the field and where you want to take it? I think right now, like, if I, if I could accomplish one thing, it would be to expand access to ketogenic metabolic therapy for adults specifically with, with epilepsy. Um, the Charlie Foundation has a really great um, resource where you can see like in your state or in your country, like where, where you can get care. And according to like all of the clinics that are on there, there's 23 states in the US that have no adult ketogenic therapy clinic for seizures. 18 states only have one clinic in the entire state. So wow. there's a huge portion of our country that has zero access to an adult dietitian that specializes in ketogenic therapy for epilepsy. That is a huge problem. Mm -hmm. So we need more dietitians. We need more opportunities for them to get proper training and opportunities for other healthcare providers to get that training. So I think that that's the huge thing is like, we need people trained and these clinics to start. Um, that's something that I'm really passionate about. People reach out to me all the time on LinkedIn, like, hey, my neurology clinic wants to start this keto thing, please help. <laughs> um, so I'm always really happy to like, I have a standard list of resources because I have replied to this email so many times of like, if you are an adult dietitian starting a clinic, please do reach out to me. Like I am more than happy to support you. We have an adult like keto dietitian networking group where we can all kind of talk about, you know, complex situations and how you might handle them. Um, ask questions to people who have been in this field for a long time. So there's tons of people that are like happy to connect and mentor each other. Like I'm, I'm very passionate about expanding access to care. So I think that's one thing I'm really excited about. Um, another reason for that is that transition of care from pediatrics to adults is not great. Um, so there are some people that need to be on a ketogenic diet lifelong. For example, people with GLUT1 deficiency syndrome. So I'm actually on the medical advisory board for um, the GLUT1 deficiency foundation. And I think that's a huge thing that a lot of those people struggle with is that once they age out of their pediatric clinic, they have nowhere to go because there is no adult clinic for them to go to. Ooh, so cool. yeah, so people come to me when they're in their early 20s and they're like, oh, we haven't seen a dietitian in years and they have micronutrient deficiencies and they are having issues with seizures or movement disorder that like just no one has been treating for a couple of years because they didn't know where to go. So mm -hmm. That's another huge reason that we need to expand access to care in the adult world and make transitions from pediatric to adulthood um, a little bit easier for people. That's a really hard time with a lot going on and um, they need more support. Um, I'm also really passionate about like women's issues. So I actually at the American Epilepsy Society conference, I presented on catamenial epilepsy where people have an increase in seizures around their menstrual cycle. And I think that we need more research in that area. We've been really successful in our clinic with implementing 
targeted nutritional interventions to help decrease those catamenial seizures. And I think that is a really powerful tool that could be more widely implemented and we need more research in that area and more people working on that. Yeah. What kind of tools are you guys using for, is it, I'm assuming right around the cycle, you're implementing maybe some supplements that increase ketone production or what what are you guys doing in that regard? So it's very individualized depending on the person. So um, some people like to do intermittent fasting. We might decrease their carbohydrate intake from like 20 grams to 15 grams. We might just boost their fat intake. We might have them add MCT oil or increase MCT oil during that time. I don't think it's fully understood how hormones impact ketosis and how ketosis impacts hormones. So like in both directions. So I think we need more research on on that as well, um, because I think we're seeing some really interesting things um, and that we can target interventions and get people better seizure control in something like catamenial epilepsy that's been historically very difficult to treat. Yeah, that's incredible that you guys are, that you're, you're working on some of those things or just, just developing some possible options for women, you know, especially uh, dealing with this kind of thing where we've got such a big influence of hormones that I'm sure, you know, makes a massive shift um, throughout the course of the month, every month. Um, So that that's incredible. And it's so exciting to hear where your passions lie and there's so much work to be done, of course, on the education front. Um, and it seems like things are so, sort of starting to spread, which is great. I, I guess, what are some of the biggest obstacles in getting this into you know, more medical establishments? Would you say, I mean, that's like a big loaded question, right? But <laughs> what, are some, what are some of the, the obstacles that you see in implementing the therapy from both a you know micro level down to the, the patient all the way to you know, big picture with getting this into practice, um, you know, in, in places where we're not, we don't just have one adult clinic in an entire state, right? Um, what are some of the biggest challenges there that you're seeing? Yeah, actually, our our team actually did a survey, an international survey about acceptance of ketogenic therapy in adults versus pediatrics. And we published that It is very widely accepted in pediatrics and not so widely accepted in adults. But I think, you know, there's some reasons for that. Um, They're the first set of international um, recommendations for management of ketogenic therapies in adults with neurological conditions was published in 2021. Pediatric recommendations were around for a very long time before that first set of adult recommendations was published. So I think that's a huge part of it is that we need more public like international publications about this is how you need to approach it because otherwise people don't know about it and think it's just for kids Um, the other part of it is because there's so many hospitals that don't offer this can you imagine being you know a a neurology resident or a neurology fellow. You completed all of your training at a hospital that didn't have ketogenic therapy. So then you go on to be a neurologist and you have never seen it firsthand. So you don't know to offer it. Like you get training in all the medications, you get training in the devices, in the surgery, but you're never trained in diet. You're not going to offer it to your patients. So I think that we need to increase awareness among like the students, like the medical students, the residents, the fellows, and and get them the training. Like I routinely have um, all of those people come and shadow me in my clinic and watch me do an education session. Um, I give presentations to the residents every year to just give them the latest updates on um, ketogenic therapy for different neurological conditions. So I think that we just need to educate people earlier and get people exposure or like if if they're in a state or you know doing their education at a place that doesn't have access to it like is there some remote shadowing opportunity that they could do or some program that they could take or like a class that they could take just to to get them the knowledge because i think if you've never been exposed to it you're going to be extremely uncomfortable offering it and i think that also kind of ties into um, status epilepticus. So that was one of the things I was very passionate about and still am for the neuro ICU um, is that the new recommendations that were published in 2022 actually recommend starting ketogenic therapy for status epilepticus within the first seven days. In the current published literature, um, people have started it anywhere from day zero to day 155. 
of no. status epilepticus. So that's a very large range. Um, and I think historically it has just been used as a last ditch effort to save someone's life um, and is not being thought of alongside of the other therapies that are available. So I think that, you know, again, one of the reasons that it's not being thought of is that people never had exposure to it when they were doing their training and education. So we need more people to start implementing it and adopting it. And honestly, I think if people start using it for status epilepticus, which should be the new standard if we're supposed to start it within the seven, first seven days, um, that that will prompt more people to start creating outpatient clinics so that they can support those patients as they transition out of the hospital and need supervision in the outpatient setting. Absolutely. Yeah. That could kind of spark a lot, that sort of a trickle effect from there. Um, that, yeah, there's a lot of work to do for sure on the education front that uh, it's, um, but, you know, I will say we have come a long way. Uh, there's a long way to go, but it's exciting to see what you guys are developing as well, um, your group. And if somebody wanted to find resources specifically, I mean, you've, you're a wealth of knowledge, right? You've got a lot of great things for your patients. What publicly can they find out there that you've put into the world? I know we've got your great YouTube videos, but are there anything, anything that they can kind of get their hands on? Um, I know you've done some writing and would love to kind of share some of the places that people can find you or any other resources you might recommend. Yeah, so um, our clinic website is uwhealth.org slash ketogenic diet. So that's a good resource um, for people, especially in like Wisconsin and Illinois, if they need support. Um, for other people who are looking for support, the Charlie Foundation, charliefoundation.org, they have a list where you can click under resources and find a hospital to see if there's a hospital in your state that um, offers ketogenic therapy. Um, there's also a find a professional um, where there are people who offer telemedicine for if you don't have access to ketogenic therapy in your state. So those are really good resources. Um, let's see, I'm trying to think. Oh, ketomastery.pro is a really excellent training program by Beth Zupek Kanya and Denise Potter. Um, so if there's dietitians that want to do a training, that is a really excellent resources or other clinicians, not just dietitians, like if there's neurologists or um, um, advanced practice providers or anyone that wants training, that's probably the best training out there. Uh, the International Neurological Ketogenic Society, INCS, um, is a really great resource. They It's neuroketo.org, and they have a list of like all of the publications and research on ketogenic therapy. So if people want to dig into the literature, that's a really excellent resource. Um, and the Global um, Symposium on Ketogenic Diet Therapies is coming up, and that's going to be a really great well, source of knowledge. Um, and then obviously the Metabolic Health Summit is an, <laughs> another great resource um, for people that want to learn about ketogenic therapy. And there's just a ton of great books out there. Um, I really love The Big Fat Surprise by Nina Teicholz. That's like one of my favorite books, Brain Energy by Dr. Chris Palmer. Um, so there's a ton of great books out there too. Yeah, no, those are two great uh, titles that you just riffed <laughs> off there that I highly recommend reading if you haven't already. Um, and some great uh, conferences, websites. I mean, I may be a little biased, but um, <laughs> we appreciate that so much. We also have a medical education platform where we're putting all of our presentations from conferences, metabolicinitiative.com, uh, so people can find stuff there. But I really think this is going to take a group collective effort to continue to like move the needle on metabolic based therapies, but it's exciting to see where we are it's sort of like tip of the iceberg for what we can do, especially within neurological conditions. And you're really one of those amazing people that is leading the charge in the field. And we feel so honored to have you at MHS coming up January 25th through the 28th. Um, you can still get tickets if you want to come out and see um, Kelly speak and really dive into metabolic-based therapies. It's going to be an incredible, incredible time. We're, we're really lucky to have you. So if you, if you want to get tickets, you can get them at metabolichealthsummit.com. And uh, it's going to be four days of science and a lot of fun. And we're so thankful to have you. And thank you so much for joining me today. Is, is there anything else you'd like to mention before, before we go? 
Um, I really appreciate uh, speaking with you today and being invited to speak at the Metabolic Health Summit. I'm really excited to connect with people. And if there's any adult dietitians that are just getting started out in ketogenic therapy or, you know, anyone else that has questions, neurologists, whatever, um, feel free to reach out to me. Um, LinkedIn is a good way to connect with me. I'm always happy to help provide, you know, support and resources for people that are looking to learn and get started. Amazing. Thank you so much. That's really awesome that you're helping so many other people. It seems like it's such a great dietetics community within ketogenic metabolic therapy, which is awesome and, and um, is really going to move the, the needle. So thank you again for joining me. We'll make sure to include all of the links and wonderful resources mentioned in the show notes for this uh, episode. But uh, until next time, thank you all for listening and watching. And Kelly, I will see you very soon. <laughs> yes, thank you. Thank you for tuning in to this episode of The Metabolic Link with Kelly Faltersack. Uh, such an incredible interview with somebody who's just so passionate about ketogenic metabolic therapy and really moving the needle in a big way, not just with her patients, not just in education, but with other dietitians in our field. Um, so we'll be sure to include all of the links and things that were mentioned in this interview in the show notes. So definitely check that out. And I want to mention early bird tickets are still available through August 1st only, and you can save a bunch of money if you purchase those tickets, uh, your registrations early. Uh, so make sure you head over to metabolichealthsummit.com if you want to hear Kelly Faltersack speak. She's going to be diving deep into the implementation of ketogenic metabolic therapy. Um, and you really won't want to miss this scientific and medical conference. We've got uh, such a wide variety of incredible experts coming out in an, a four day, really an experience, um, to be honest with you. So I hope you'll join us in Clearwater Beach. And thank you so much for listening to this episode. If you like this episode, leave us a comment, leave us a review, share it with your friends and family, because the more we spread this information, the more we spread the science and expertise of, of experts like Kelly, the more we can uh, further this field of metabolic health and therapy. Thanks so much.